The story of Anne and Kiana Pietrzak is truly a love story. However, after what should have been their most joyous occasion, their lives would take a tragic turn that no husband should ever be forced to witness. Today, we're going to take you through the brutally heartbreaking case of Jan and Kiana Pietrzak. Born on February 16, 1982, in the sunny region of Southern California, Kiana Faye Jenkins was the apple of her parents' eye. She was an only child to Roy and Glenna Faye Jenkins. As she grew, she pursued her education and eventually earned a master's degree in public health from San Diego State University. Her goal was to become a doctor, driven by a passion for health education. On the other side of the story, there was Jan. Born on March 13, 1984, in Poland, he and his family moved to the United States when he was just 11 years old. The move to America was a life-changing experience for young Jan. Growing up in the Bensonhurst area of Brooklyn, New York, he was deeply moved by the events of 9-11. His sense of patriotism and duty led him to join the Marines in 2003. Jan's mother, Henrico Varga, fondly remembered how he always believed in giving back to his adopted country. Mom, we live in this country. We have to be patriotic. We have to give back, he would say. So, Jan served his country as a helicopter mechanic in Iraq, rising to the rank of sergeant. It was in the midst of his military service that Jan crossed paths with Kuyana. Their story began at a party for Marines being deployed to Iraq, thanks to a mutual friend who attended San Diego State University. Initially, Kuyana was hesitant to date a Marine, but Jan's charm and their undeniable connection won her over. Their love was pure and transcended differences in skin color, age, and background. They were a young, happy couple with dreams of a bright future and many planned children ahead of them. Fast forward to October 15, 2008, a day that would shatter the happiness of Jan and Kiana. That day, both failed to show up for work, sending alarm bells ringing among their co-workers. The police were called to perform a well check, and what they discovered inside their home was a scene of unimaginable horror. The front door stood wide open, and the smell of gasoline and natural gas filled the air. The purse, with its contents scattered on the floor, hinted at a struggle. Inside, officers stumbled upon the lifeless and bound bodies of Jan and Kiana. A vibrator and red candle lay near Kiana, revealing the brutality of her ordeal. Jan had been mercilessly beaten, and Kiana had been brutally sexually assaulted before they were both tortured and shot. The house had been ransacked, and an attempt had been made to set it on fire. Racial slurs were spray-painted on the walls and mirrors. The crime scene was a heart-wrenching nightmare. The investigation began immediately, with friends, family and co-workers questioned extensively. Jan's reputation as a hard charger who upheld strict standards, along with his recent large bonus, raised suspicions. The police were looking for leads, and the evidence began to point towards Marine personnel. It was Lance Corporal Tyrone Miller who repeatedly appeared in conversations. Miller, a Marine who had expressed his dislike for Jan, was already on the radar due to a gunshot wound he sustained shortly after the murders. But Miller's involvement went much deeper than anyone could have anticipated. During questioning, Miller initially denied involvement, but ultimately crumbled under pressure. The search of Miller's home unearthed a treasure trove of incriminating evidence, including Jan's ATM card, stolen jewelry, firearms, blue bandanas, and DNA evidence. The gravity of the situation became undeniable, and Miller was taken into custody. He eventually pointed the finger at three more individuals involved in the crime, Emery's John, Kevin Cox, and someone referred to as Psycho. All four suspects were brought in for questioning, and they confessed to their involvement. However, they each attempted to shift blame 
onto one another. The horrific details of that fateful night began to emerge, revealing a premeditated plan filled with violence, torture, and racial slurs. The motive for this gruesome crime was twofold, money and revenge. The perpetrators believed there would be money and valuables in Jan and Kiana's home, but they also sought revenge for perceived slights, including Jan's alleged interference with Miller's promotion. In March 2013, five years after the murders, three of the defendants, Miller, Johns and Cox, went on trial. All four had already been dishonorably discharged from the Marines, and they were all facing the death penalty. Sentences were handed down. Miller, Johns and Sykes received the death penalty, while Cox was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The case of Jan and Kiana Pietrzak is a chilling reminder of the depths of human cruelty. Four individuals trained to protect their country turned their skills against one of their own and his innocent wife. The impact of their heinous act reverberates through the hearts of those who knew and loved Jan and Kiana.